So for the next talk, we have Tim Stoddard from Litchfield uh, presenting on developing games for the gaming and casino industry. So please all give him a very warm mid-afternoon welcome. Please. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, glad to see a nice, nice sizable crowd. Uh, so uh, a little bit more info about uh, who I am. Uh, Let's get back to this. There we go. So, uh, a little bit more specific about myself. So, uh, I'm a C. I'm a. My official job title is as a C++ games programmer. Uh, I've been enjoying. I'm love. Been loving to make uh, computer games and a whole lot of games and writing code for games since I was around uh, 16 or so. I even went to university to study it and ended up getting like a first class uh, degree in it and then uh, I and then I joined joined the uh, company which I currently work for Cyclone Games back in 2015 and uh, started off as a junior and uh, in late 20 and as of late 2016 I'm uh, I moved up to a, a general C++ games programmer uh, so the game, kind of games that I work on uh, well uh, the, the game, two games on the left and right, White King, Fortune 5, are games that I specifically worked on. In the middle is, an, is a game that, uh, not I worked on specifically, it was a, a, a co uh, one of my colleagues, but, uh, it's, kind of, but uh, it's the kind of game that, uh, my, that a Cyclone game works on. Uh, uh, so, fi so, five re so five real video slot games on massive machines at either betting shops or casinos. Uh, so apologies for the crude rec video recording. This wasn't mine. I I happened to find this on YouTube. Uh, some recording from within a lad books, but uh, as you've seen, this is an example of a of what's called a B2 category game. I'll I'll go I'll do like a basic basic rundown of like like uh, the legal regulation like regulatory size, but essentially B2 games are the uh, big paying games, which are like 20 to 50 pounds per game. You get you get a longer game with more chance of rewards, uh, uh, and you can find these in the UK. Although, if you follow the recent news, they there's probably going to be move, moving out soon. But uh, uh, that's politics for you. So, uh, I'm I'm going to have to say for you soon that a lot of you do work in like the soft like software industries. But I just uh, but even if you're not, just uh, see an interesting rundown, a basic rundown of uh, how these games work. So. It's essentially to it. So an individual game is like accounted for like four different people. So you have people like me, the programmer, uh, who writes all the codes for the games and such. You have the artist who would uh, provide you all the uh, graphics and the animations. Uh, you have the mathematician, which uh, uh, that's the person who provides all the uh, the uh, logics, the chances is of uh, what symbols get appear, what features get appear, and they, uh, they work where they work at that. They work it out. And then finally, you get the uh, tester, who is the one who like I look looks through uh, the kind of game builds and finds bugs and distributes them out to the correct people to fix. Usually, it is the programmer who gets on most of the bugs, but uh, which is not surprising. But then, once the, all the bugs get sorted out, that game gets sent over to the distributor, who then finds more bugs, bugs, bugs for us to fix. And then, once we fix that, we get a finished game. Simple enough. So uh, the kind of unique thing about the gambling games that I work on is uh, is that uh, you get different areas, you get different areas of the industry. Uh, well, you get different sub areas of uh, the gambling industry. So uh, so you get, uh, but uh, the three for the three main ones that uh, my that my parent uh, uh, that the parent company Playtech work on, on well. That I, that I work get involved in is uh, like online, mobile, and retail. Retail being the primary one that Cyclone Games does. So retail specifically means working on big machines like these. So these are uh, so these are vi specifically video bet ones which you'll find in like like, like betting shops and casinos either in the UK or around you or around most uh, around most uh, markets we work on in Europe. Uh, they have they have a they they have at least two screens, but they can go up to four. 
Uh, you have two different kinds. You have the standard definition, which is like 1024 uh, by 768, and then you have the high definition, which is 1920 by 1080. And uh, built that then it built basically like Windows, Windows like machines with uh, their own GDKs inside. And uh, we've generally built games to be like this, where you have uh, where you had to account for multiple different uh, screen sizes. So, for example, so uh, on the very left, you'll see uh, what a standard definition game would look like. But and then on the right, you could have a and then on the right, it's a high definition high definition game, but uh, it's, uh, because, but more, more because there are different kinds of machines. In the bot, the very bottom and the very top screens are uh, vastly different resolutions, and we have to account for that. Yeah. And uh, for UK specifically, eat, eat those the very bottom screens for mainly for input. But for uh, if it's for a dual screen, in that gets relegated to the main screen where you see the reels are. Uh, the other uh, system that we work on is called. Uh, TrueServe. Uh, so TrueServe is, ex uh, TrueServe is almost entirely exclusive towards uh, Italy and Norway. Italy and Norway. And the main difference between VideoBet and TrueServe is that VideoBet is mostly client-based. There's a platform that uh, handles like multiple machines at once, but uh, with TrueServe, you have, you have every game um, has an underlying server program that it communicates with the client. Right. Uh, specific, and they are almost primarily uh, dual screen, in, and uh, and with uh, the same with the same uh, different kind of resolutions. Although, but Norway has is kind of interesting in which it has a uh, a resolution of like 1680 by 1050, which isn't standard, but uh, uh, it's a, it's a fairly easy one to handle with. So, uh, so. So what's the difference between like working on a video bear and a trousseau system? Uh, so uh, what is there with packaging? So with a trousseau game, you have to you have to provide a separate program for the client and a separate program for the uh, server, uh, and which can get which can get pretty awkward when you're trying to build like create like new builds. It's also particularly awkward if you want to it also with it also uh, with TrueServe games, they had to be uploaded to a server, uh, which is a, uh, which uh, is often in a completely different country. Which means that you, you tend to have the fun experience of of building a game, then up, having it uploaded, waiting an hour for it to go live, and then realize you have you have another minor build which will require another additional fix. Uh, yeah, not fun. Compare that to say VideoBet, which is a which, it's because you only need to build, build specifically for the client, you only have to really build one package, and that package is also simple enough that you can just up, that the QA team can just upload it directly to the cab without having to uh, deal with deal with a, with a service. But however, a server client does have its advantages. Uh, one specifically is that. Uh, uh, because the server and client are separate, that also means that your that your game logic, which would be on the server, uh, has to be separate from what you're what would typically on the client, which is your visual presentation. Uh, because of that, so uh, that you can also uh, on the client side, this can be mixed unless you build your build your uh, your uh, architecture correctly. Uh, but if you don't, that could lead to risks such, risks such as uh, if, you're, if uh, a certain part of your logic has to be delayed because your presentation takes a while to uh, complete. That, can lead, that could lead to some potential risks that, uh, a server can't, that having a separate can avoid because the logic is meant, because then the logic would happen instantly. The presentation can happen as long as it wants. Another one is if in the events that you're and that you have a player who's playing a game. He's do, uh, they're doing a really good run. Really good run. They're gonna look like gonna get high paid, and then suddenly there's a power failure or a network failure, and the game shuts off. Understandably, that player would be very, very angry if he turn, if he goes to the staff who's told him, "Sorry, there's nothing we can do. We can't replay the game." 
Uh, both side, uh, both systems have a way of handling this. Fortunately, uh, but for video, for video bet, there's a flag that gets raised if a system, if a, their system goes down un unexpectedly, so that when the system restarts, it'll say, it'll, that flag will basically say, "Hey, this game, this game failed unexpectedly. It, it restart exactly on this game." However, the developer is responsible for replaying basically the game up to that point. Right. Uh, there's, also the, there's, there's also the disadvantage in which, uh, for the client, it's, on, it's only specific to one machine. Alternatively, when it goes to TrueServe, uh, uh, the replay system is handled through, is handled through the server. Uh, basically, all the developer needs to do is just to tell the server Hey, I'm I'm pressing this button. I'm sending this mess. I'm sending this button, and I'm sending this message at this point. I mean, to which the server will collect those, and then in the event of a failure, or when it gets to replaying, the server will basically send those messages back to the client, and then the client will handle it accordingly. Also, because it's not, also because uh, it's being handled on a SERP, handled on a central server. Uh, if you if your if one machine fails, you can just basically go take your like. Take your card and play and replay the game on a separate machine, and it will work just as just as you expect. So, what do developers need to know? And I tend to find this when I when I go out, uh, whenever I talk to people who aren't part of the industry, they always seem to ask like, uh, uh, "And how do you make the game? How do you make the game fair? How do you make the how do you make the game fair? Are they completely random?" Do you, and do you, and do you, you uh, 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 how do you make sure that uh, pe people aren't just going to be losing all their money? Simple answer is we have to. Uh, we have we have to because as a uh, because a lot of the country because all the countries we work on have uh, quite strict regulations and uh, thanks to our QA team, both the QA team and also. Uh, the testing processes through our distributors, we have to abide by those rules. Uh, this can be stuff from uh, like how long a game has to play a, a minimum time, I mean, which for the UK I think it's three seconds for a single spin game, and then for the high stakes B2 games it's like 20 seconds. Uh, another, but the most important one is uh, called the RTP or return to player. Essentially, the most basic way to put this is that it's the ratio between how much gets paid in and how much gets paid out. Now, if you pay in, if someone pays it, if someone pays in over the lifetime, over the lifetime of a game, like a hundred pounds, it's expected on average that they would, and the RTP is set to ninety percent, and then it's expected to return. You're expected to pay back at least ninety pounds, although. Although uh, with the regulations, it's a kind of, this, this value is expected over much, much longer periods of times. It's usually up to like a million or a billion games, games, uh, and uh, it's pretty important that we actually meet the eat, that we that uh, we try to meet exactly as close to the RTP as possible. Usually to like put usually to like a hundredth of a percentage, because if you go too high, because if you go too high, the uh, the betting shops and casinos aren't going to be too happy with you ever paying games. But if you go too low, it's potentially breaking the law, and you'll get the camp and you'll get the gambling commission coming after you. Uh, we also have to fa also, but also as a developer, when you're dealing with multiple regions, you have to deal with uh, multiple different regions because uh, on the, unlike the uh, online and web gaming market, at, at retail market has pretty strict rules when it comes to those which differ between country to country. Along with uh, it's not as simple as just changing the text to a different language. Sometimes some games will have a completely different some games will have a completely different user interfaces. So as you can see in this example, the uh, top one is the is Fortune 5 for the UK game market, but below it is what the is what uh, the same game would look like for the uh, Denmark for Denmark. Uh, and as you can also notice with Denmark is that there's complete there's also additional features which are which are which aren't specifically regu 
is specific to regulation, required for regulation, but it's usually preferred for the market. Uh, you also have a, but you also have, you also have a regulate, also regulation specifically with what I said before, like, like minimum game time, um, how much gets paid out, how, how much you get to pay it out over a certain period of time, what the RTPs are, uh, and sometimes even completely different into uh, betting amounts, which will also require like completely different maths as well. Uh, so this is what. So this is what it's like uh, now for the retail market. But it's also kind of a question of what's uh, happening in for the future, and a lot of this. And for Playtech, this is specifically uh, what's called G Pass or Gameplay as a Service. So uh, essentially, the idea of it, the idea of G Pass, is to basically take a game from one system and have it be played almost entirely the same on a on another system. So you can play your game on a retail machine, and then you can play the exact play play continue playing on your exact same account on a on a website or on a mobile device. Uh, uh, this is usually done through uh, HTML5, which, uh, being a C++ dev developer, is kind is kind of uh, gets kind of gets uh, fun at sometimes, just trying to deal with uh, completely different compilers and different errors and and how things work. Uh, although it does have an additional benefit in which it, you do get uh, on exclusively online. Uh, developers who mostly work on online and mobile games had to understand how the retail market works and seeing how completely different it is, and vice versa. Because, uh, because uh, it's particularly uh, you get, it's particularly fun seeing a uh, online developer uh, going and uh, working on a uh, working on a retail game for uh, for a market that's. Non UK and and then getting a whole load of bugs back saying wait you have wait we need to do all this is what do you do what do you need to do when you have to what do you do as a retail developer when you have to deal with these many regulations and the honest answer is most of the time we usually have a well we usually have to build a completely separate build <laughs> because there's too many changes to handle in just one specific build uh, so. Uh, that's kind of mostly what I've uh, had to speak about. So uh, thank you for listening. Um, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to. I don't think I would be allowed to say that on camera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think. I mean, although I kind of will say is that a lot of the uh, random inputs is kind of out of my control. we oh, oh, particularly uh, for both VideoBet and TrueServe, it's mostly handled uh, by uh, the internal machines API, in which we don't, in which we just get given the random num we just get given the numbers. We don't actually. Have is we just got to, all we have to focus on is uh, how we actually actually process those random numbers. I think it comes primarily from audience questions. That's where it comes from, the random numbers. <laughs> all right, uh, I think that's all the time we have. If you have any questions for Tim, uh, please, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them uh, outside. So we, we have a pretty tight time frame for our next talk, so we'll get started on that one. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's give him another round of applause. <laughs>